This video, I am going to rank the studio albums of Steely Dan. Now, Steely Dan, of course, were Walter Becker and Donald Fagan. Unfortunately, we lost Walter Becker last year. They were initially active in the 1970s. Their final album of the decade was Gaucho from 1980. And then they went through a period where they didn't do any work together apart from Donald Fagan's Common Curiad solo album in the early 90s. They reformed back in the 2000s and put out two albums. So I'm going to cover all of their studio albums in this video. And we are going to start with number nine, Everything Must Go. This album is a decent album. It's not a it's not a bad Steely Dan studio album. There's really not a bad Steely Dan album of the whole bunch. This one, however, it's just a little too um unmemorable, I guess. You know, I like Blues Beach, I like Everything Must Go, I think the last mall is catchy, but other than that, the tracks really there's not too much to distinguish them. They're not really songs that kind of stick in your head after you've listened to the album. I'm not crazy about the cover artwork. Uh, it's just that album of all the Steely Dan albums is the one that I find I listen to the least. Number eight is going to be Can't Buy a Thrill, which may surprise some people just because it's got the radio hits, Dirty Work, Do It Again, Reel It in the Years. I guess my problem is I'm not crazy about the David Palmer material on here. David Palmer was Teely Dan's co-vocalist. He shared vocal duties with Donald Fagan on the first album because Donald Fagan wasn't terribly confident in his vocals. However, after the first album, he realized he essentially was the sound and the personality and the voice that lent Steely Dan its distinct character. But the David... Palmer tracks I'm just not crazy about. I think there's some tracks on here that are just a little too hokey. I like obviously the tracks that I mentioned before. I think Fire in the Hole is a great track. I like the track Kings, but there's just too many gaps in here. Songs that I'm just not terribly crazy about. Uh, Brooklyn owes the charmer under me. I don't care for that much. Um, I'm not a huge fan of changing of the guard. Just there's too much on here that just kind of leaves me indifferent or cold to the material. I hate ranking it this low because it really is a great album, but I also, I hate the cover artwork. Don't care for it at all. And I know Steely Dan didn't like the cover artwork either, but just the entire package for me, I got to rank it lower. I got to rank it at number eight. Number seven, I'm going to go with Two Against Nature. Now, I really like this album a lot. I feel badly that I have to rank it so low. It really was a return to form for Steely Dan. It was the first album that they had created as Steely Dan since Gaucho in 1980. And there's a lot to love about this album. Gaslighting Abbey is a great album opener. What a Shame About Me reminds me a lot of a song that could have fit right in on the Royal Scam. I think the first uh, single off here was Cousin Dupree, which is just a classic late period St Steely Dan song. I like Janie Runaway. I like uh, Jack of Speed is a great track. Just so many strong tracks on here. It's a little closer to a Donald Fagan solo album than really a Steely Dan album, although you could argue Donald Fagan's solo stuff didn't, tri didn't stray too far from the material he produced with Steely Dan, but just, I really like the albums, the other albums and their discography a little bit more. That's the only reason I have to rank this one at number seven. Number six, Countdown to Ecstasy. Love this album. Bodhisattva is a great album opener. I love how they just totally go off and do an extended jam at the end of the song. I like Razor Boy a lot. Uh, Boston Rag is a strong track. Your Gold Teeth is fantastic. Uh, Showbiz Kids for me is the weakest of the bunch. I'm not crazy about that track for whatever reason. It just, I don't know, I don't care for it. My Old School is another classic early Steely Dan track. I love Pearl of the Quarter. I think it might be the only time that Steely Dan did a country 
flavor tune, but I think they pull it off great. I love the whole slide guitar on that track. And King of the World with its use of synthesizer, I think it's just so clever. And it's just a, a great track that conveys that otherworldliness of the lyrics. Number five, Gaucho. This was the last Steely Dan album for a while. I think towards the end of the decade, Walter Becker and Donald Fagan. They were kind of burned out a little bit, and I think there were some conflict. Walter Becker was getting into some substance abuse issues, and I think they were just ready to call it a day after that entire decade. But there's really a, a great variety of tracks on here. Babylon Sisters is a great album opener with that cool keyboard lick. I love, obviously, Hey 19 was a classic. Uh, the song that most people would recognize off of here. I love Time Out of Mind. That actually has Mark Knopfler on guitar, which I think is very cool. My Rival is great. Gaucho. It's just kind of a short album. I think one of the reasons I don't rank it higher is that there's really only seven tracks on here. Uh, I would have loved to have seen them do a little bit more. And I know there were some songs that uh, got erased or wiped out that were going to be originally part of that track lineup. But again, there's not a single bad Steely Dan album. And Gaucho is, for me, a, a near perfect album if there is such a thing. Number four, Pretzel Logic. I think this album has a distinction of having the most tracks of any Steely Dan album of their early period, but there's so many great ones on here. Rookie Don't Lose That Number was the big single. Night by Night is a great track. It almost sounds like it could be the theme from a cop show. Uh, Any Major Dude Will Tell You is a, a fantastic song. Berry Town is okay. Um, East St. Louis, to, eh, can't even pronounce that one. East St. Louis Toodaloo, East St. Louis Toodaloo. I'm not sure exactly how you even pronounce it. It's a Duke Ellington cover with kind of that wah-wah trumpet or whatever that sound is. And that song I, I think is excellent. Parker's Band, a tribute to Charlie Parker. Uh, Through with Buzz is just a very cool, it's such a brief track, but I just love it. It's uh, such a gem. Pretzel Logic is a very cool, kind of has some sinister undertones to it, um, but it's a time travel song, and I think it's really cool. It's all the classic elements of Steely Dan, combining that jazz with their pop sensibilities. Just a fantastic title track. Uh, with a Gun, you know, again, Steely Dan, it never would sound like this again. This is kind of the last time they really borrowed from some of these influences and, and really stretched out uh, kind of thematically and also uh, with some of the different sound textures that they used. Um, Charlie Freak, great piano. Again, another brief track, but a great piano-driven rocker. And then Monkey in Your Soul. I, I really like that. It almost sounds to me kind of like an Elton John track for whatever reason. Uh, I feel like Elton John could have covered that song great, but I, I love it. It was a great way to close out that that um, that album. Number three, I'm going to go with The Royal Scam. Of all Steely Dan's album, I feel like this has the darkest material of all on it, and that's saying something for a Steely Dan album, but you have Kid Charlemagne, which is a tale of a, you know, a drug dealer. Uh, you've got The Caves of Altamira. Uh, Don't Take Me Alive, which of course is about a, a person who has kind of reached the end of the rope and is either holding some people hostage or threatening to shoot, do a mass shooting. Uh, it's never entirely articulated, but it's just got that sense of dread that pervades it. Sign in Stranger, uh, The Fez, kind of that mock disco track that Steely Dan did is, is really a, a great, kind of a, a nice, uh, you know, as danceable as Steely Dan ever got, but I don't know, I, they, you can tell they have a lot of fun with it. Green Earrings about a, a robber stealing jewelry is a great track. Uh, Haitian Divorce, I love kind of the reggae and the wah-wah guitar uh, licks that you got in there, the nice, the, the cool guitar solo. Uh, everything you did about a husband confronting his lover about her infidelities. 
and the Royal Scam is just a great way to close out. It perfectly matches just the whole menace of the cover art here. And like I say, it's almost to me, this was uh, Steely Dan's Animals, um, just in the way the, the, this, there's this dark undercurrent running through all the tracks. Number two, got to go with a fantastic Asia. I mean, what more can be said about this? Such a great album. You got Black Cow, one of the greatest openers on a Steely Dan album ever. And then you've got the classic, the extended jam, Asia, which moves through so many suites. Just the instrumentation on here. And this really was Steely Dan and a revolving cast of studio musicians. I think they used different studio musicians on each track on this album. And it's just perfect in so many ways. You've got Deacon Blues, uh, Home is Home at Last is a great track with that Purdy Shuffle. Um, you got Josie, the perfect album closer. Peg with Michael McDonald soaring background vocals. Just so many classics that made their way onto the radio and definitely by far Steely Dan's best-selling album and with good reason. However, I got to rank the album that came right before that one higher. I am just in love absolutely with Katie Lied. This was the first Steely Dan album that I ever owned and I got it back on CD in the day and I really, I did not recognize any of the tracks on here. I just knew that I wanted to get into Steely Dan. I'd heard some of their songs on the radio. I probably had heard Hey 19, I'd heard Peg, yeah, you know, Reeling in the Years had been on the radio. And so I started with this one because it was in the used record bins and I picked it up and boy, was I not disappointed. You got Black Friday, which is just a great album opener. Um, so many cool, cool tracks on here. Bad Sneakers, um, Rose Darling, I love. Daddy Don't Live in That New York City No More is a great groove to it. Uh, Dr. Wu, Everyone's Gone to the Movies, kind of almost got a Calypso kind of a thing, uh, theme to it that I really love. I love Chain Lightning about a fascist rally. Um, your Gold Teeth 2, I think, is a very cool sequel to the track that was on Countdown to Ecstasy. Any World That I'm Welcome To, again, with Michael McDonald, his classic backup vocals. And Throwback the Little Ones. I love that little piano coda at the end, too, that they just kind of tacked on there. That makes such... Uh, it's a great note to end on. And, it, again, this is such a brilliant classic album. People may argue Asia is greater, but for me, I will always hold Katie Light in the greatest regard. So thanks everybody for, again, watching my ranking video. If you have any suggestions, any bands that you would like me to cover, I'd be more than happy to. If you want to leave your comments about what you think are Steely Dan's rankings for their nine studio albums, let me know. And as always, take care and thanks again for watching.